Hello Virgo. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoincha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. And for those of you who are new, um, just to let you know, I have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self. Um, I do that and I never really have ever uh, channeled through any spirit guides. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. And today, actually, I'm going to be adding in during this upload, um, a little bonus. And the bonus is not something that I typically do. It's something, the reading itself is very different. So stay tuned if some of you are still interested. It'll be at the end of this reading. you might be resonating with this um, feeling that these are your own f feelings and emotions as well um, the reason why I say that is because of the intensity of the cards here um, just to let you know right from the get-go there are certain cards in this deck that I associate with lust as well as friendship you have here um, two cards out of three that I usually have that are very lustful. You have a friendship card. So for some of you, this is a very casual connection. Um, and the casual connection involves sexuality. Um, some of you might be in a friends with benefits connection as well. So that's what's popping up here first, first and foremost. All right. We have here, first card is the strongest. We have mothering, followed by doubt. Then we have sexuality, followed by sensuality. Both my lustful cards. Um, power, and then we have play, creativity, illusion, fear, and then we have ecstasy under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Virgo, the connection that I have with you has opened my eyes. I see you now as somebody who is very nurturing, caring, and protecting. You want to take care. You have all this unconditional love that just comes from you. I never really... I never really opened up to you or admired you for who you really are. I should have. And right now I have doubts, doubts about this connection, doubts about what might even happen going forward. Will I even be in this connection with you? Do you want me to be in this connection with you? And the reason why I have doubts is because there has been a lot of lust. Yes, I am sexually addicted to you. I think about you a lot. It's hard not to. I find that everything about your body, your skin, I just want to squeeze you, I want to touch you, all over. It's, <laughs> your very existence is like you're teasing me. 
just knowing that you're there. But you also have this beautiful way about you where you're just so sensual. Everything you do, even the clothes that you wear, they fall on your body so nicely. You are very graceful. You're very classy. To me, you're classy. And your eyes, I get lost in those eyes. There's this sense of being intoxicated and I can't help myself. There's a part of you that is very, very demanding. Sometimes I feel demanding not about, not about intimacy, but about life. You have power. You are power. I see this, I sense this, I feel this. And it's hard for me to break away from something like this. You have the ability of making me emotionally weak, vulnerable, weak in the knees. You also have this way of tempting me, seducing me, and you don't even have to try. This is how much power you have over me. I do feel that in this connection, I still want to have some type of a connection with you. Whether this is platonic or casual or friends with benefits, but somehow I don't want to be out of your life. I need you in my life. You are this one friend that I have who I can count on, rely on. Not only for intimacy, not only for the hope of intimacy or for the fantasy of that, but you're fun. You make me feel alive again, vibrant again. There's mischief in your eyes. You make me feel young. There's so many things about you that just brighten my, my world. Everything seems dull. But the excitement in my heart on the inside that I get is just out of this world. And I do want to create something with you. In this connection, I want to create a better connection with you. Something for the world to see. But I do feel that what I have done and the way I've behaved. It has been quite selfish to some degree. And I do feel that in this connection there is a sense of illusion. The illusion that comes through, the feeling of it, it is very strong. I hide behind a veil. I hide behind a false mask because I am embarrassed for what I have done and what I've said, what has happened. And for this reason, I do have a lot of anxiety. I have fear, I have paranoia. What may become of this connection? A long time ago, I may have seemed like I was very confident like I had a lot of self-esteem, I was very secure. Now everything is the opposite. I have a lack of confidence. I don't feel so secure and I don't feel like I have a lot of self-esteem left. And it's because of what I've done. Overall, I feel this connection and I feel that it has evolved. My feelings towards you have evolved and changed. There is a sense of ecstasy or my soul feels so much bliss and I just don't know why it's so happy. It's not just about the body anymore, my dear Virgo. It's not just about lust anymore. There's something beyond this connection that is very spiritual in nature. And I'm starting to feel that. 
And I want to focus on that. All right, Virgo. It's like this person was in a connection with you. And then they realized that not not the love part. You see, I'm not seeing the love part yet. I don't see love here, but I do see that they recognize that you have unconditional love. We could see in the cards that come out later on. Um, but there, yes, there's a lot of lust and there's a lot of feelings of friendship. However, the one thing that's really changed them is this feeling of a spiritual connection. So usually I talk about three connections. This is the spiritual, emotional, and physical. So you have the physical as well as the spiritual. Emotional is kind of getting there. It's still getting there. It's not there yet. Um, in order to have a very happy relationship, all three need to be in alignment, but not everybody on planet Earth has that. It's very common. It doesn't happen to everybody. But when it does, it's an amazing, amazing connection. All right. This is the Lover's Path Tarot. And sorry if I didn't announce, but I was sick a while ago. I'm still kind of <clears throat> getting over my flu. So my voice might not sound the same as it usually does. Um, five of arrows. And we have the eight of coins. So this is... So I'm looking at the reason why the situation between the both of you went downhill in the first place. The reason why. I like to look at the why. Um, this is either one reason, two, or it could be quite a few reasons why things didn't work out. However, I just want to have a look at least at the first two. It'll give you a rough idea as to what happened. Some of you might know about this. Some of you might not. And I always read the reverse in this particular spread. Oh my. In this connection, there was a lack of trust that led to conflict from this person's side. Possible defeat or feelings of defeat is what they were feeling. The need for self-protection or caution because there was distrust, there was struggle and there was arguments. There was discomfort and struggle with the situation that occurred between the both of you. There was also a disingenuous surrender. Defeat because of indecisiveness. There was a sense of paranoia and a sense of dishonesty. Wow. Virgo. Why does this happen? I've seen in so many readings when I have a casual or friends with benefits connection or even a connection where it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, a girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Um, there's this expectation that we're together and one day we're going to be committed. We're going to be exclusive. One person, however, thinks like this and the other does not. What happened here, and it may sound... Like the other person may sound like a hypocrite, but it's extremely normal, extremely common. This is what I've seen um, in many, many of my readings. If you are in a casual or friends with benefits connection, then the person that you're with is most likely not going to trust you, or you may not trust them. Why? Because if they're like this with you, they can be like this with others. This is what happened in this person's brain. They thought that if you are with them the way that you are with them, if you're like absolutely open and naughty and they may think that, you know what, this person has done this with other people too. 
Typically the masculine energy does feel like this, but here we also have women who have a lot of masculine energy. And so there's this double standard now. This person knows and they wanted to have that fun with you and you wanted to have it with them. However, at some point in time, there was a sense of distrust. This, this, um, where is this? Five of, <clears throat> yeah, distrust and arguments. So sometimes when you argue, people think you don't care. But arguments can happen because you actually care about them or you maybe just don't give a shit. Um, it's really interesting though because this person, whatever they were feeling, however they were feeling, they were projecting onto you. They thought that how they feel, you will also do that too. So if they're not being truthful or trustworthy, they were thinking that you're being the same because you were in an arrangement together. Some of you might be actually married or have a partner who's long-term committed. However, the same thing applies. They think that whatever you have done to them, you might be doing it to others too. It's uh, very bad. It's suspicion, a lot of suspicion. But the suspicion, suspicion comes through, um, like it said here, being very defensive, being very upset, arguing. Um, there's paranoia. This person was also paranoid. Even if there was nothing like this um, in, in your situation, like in your life, this person may still have this paranoia and they might just be making up these stories in their head and they're fantasizing. And sometimes we think about these things and we just get angry, even though it's not true. Here we have the Eight of Coins. The Eight of Coins does talk about how this person started to avoid the work that needs to be done to bring this relationship onto a next level. The card suggests perhaps it's time for a vocational, for vocational education dissatisfaction for the effort that was put into the connection. So this person actually feels that they put effort into the connection. Some of you may think that they absolutely didn't. Some of you may know that they absolutely didn't. Um, but this is what this person feels, that they actually invested some time, energy, effort into the connection, and they just did not get the results that they were hoping for. Warped. <clears throat> I'm getting the word warped. Their mind is kind of warped. I'm also getting the word stubborn and annoyance. And usually it's because where they're coming from themselves. Whatever they have experienced, they may reflect all of that onto the other person too. All right, let's have a look at the beginner's tarot deck. Oh my, okay, Eight of Cups. Then we have the Moon card. Followed by the Three of Wands. Interesting, Virgo. You have quite an interesting set of cards here. So these are any actions, any intentions that this person may have towards you. Um, two of Cups under the bottom of the deck. Beautiful card to have. So we have here the Eight of Cups. This person has moved on and they want to move on from the situation because they no longer can tolerate it. They no longer want to be in this situation which is very stuck i feel like their foot is stuck in mud they're trying to move their foot their foot comes out but the boot is still stuck in the mud <laughs> so yeah a part of them has been left behind and it's haunting them they want to take that boot out but it's just difficult to get the boot out so part of them is actually wanting to move forward but a part of them is their past is haunting them that's what i'm seeing here 
Um, do they want to move on? Absolutely, yes. They want to be in a situation that is beneficial for the both of you in a positive way. Here we also have the moon card. This person has realized that a lot of things, there was lies and betrayal. Yeah. Lies and betrayal that may have occurred in this connection. And everything happened at night in the dark, in the shadows. And so they want to bring it out into the light because they feel pretty crappy about this. They don't feel good about this. Here we also have the Three of Wands. So the Three of Wands here does talk about how in this connection, this person realizes and they have decided to make their decision. Well, decided to make their decision. That doesn't make sense. They made a decision. <laughs> um, well, actually, that does make sense, doesn't it? Anyway, I won't dwell on that. Um, so this person has made their decision. And after making that decision, and that decision was you, they're literally waiting for the ships to come in. And what does that mean? That basically just means that they'll know it when they see it. They're going to take action when they feel the time is right. What action are they going to take? You do have an action card here. The Knight of Wands. Yes. Now, I would make fun of the Knight of Wands had it not been for the King of Pentacles to back this person up. But yes, will this person come back into your life very passionately? Remember, they do have a lot of lust, a lot of passion for you. One of the main reasons why they're coming back is they want to be with you intimately. They may appear when they are in that kind of mindset to be a bit immature a bit irrational this person's going to rush back into your life they're going to want to sweep you off your feet um they're going to whisper sweet nothings into your ears but the thing is it is coupled with love okay so don't think it's just only lust at this point in time here we also have the king of pentacles this is somebody who after they approach you as a knight they will want to promise you as a king, which is amazing. So they do want to give you promise. They want to be with you. They want to show you. They want to have a connection with you that will be very um, committed, very solid. Now we also have here the Two of Cups. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. So here with the Two of Cups, there is an exchange of love. There is going to be a union, a reunion, or a reconciliation. This is two hearts coming together as one realizing that there's something beyond this lifetime that is holding them together. There's a realization for a past life connection here. Here we also have two people saying sorry to each other. And... Somebody here is asking for forgiveness. Could be one person, could be two. Either way, it's a beautiful card. Two people standing on the same level, resonating at the same frequency. However, Virgo, remember you have here the Eight of Cups and the Moon card. The time, it will take a long time. You may wonder, is this going to happen soon? No, this person has to go from the Eight of Cups, and they're moving into the distance, into the mountains, to be what? To be a hermit. After hermit comes wisdom. After wisdom comes a healing. After healing comes a strength. And then so eventually, that's what's going to happen here. There's going to be this strength that this person's going to get where they realize that, oh my goodness, look at what I did. Everything I did was wrong. And that's when they're going to have that, take that bold step and come back into your life or come into your life um, with the Knight of Wands and also offering this wonderful promise. Now, I hope that this does resonate with many of you because the outcome is very good. One thing I can tell you, this person, let them reach out to you because if you reach out to them, this might not even happen, okay? Because you'll change whatever is actually meant to be. This is, of course, a general love reading. This is not... Um, private reading but I, I by the way I am doing private reading still they're still open if in, in case anybody is interested um, they're written report readings all conducted by myself 
Um, so I just wanted to announce that, just in case some of you actually want to know what, what's really happening in this person's heart and mind. All right. I have here Archangel Answer Cards. Let's have a look at what the angels have to say about this connection. We have here, no. Now, why do we have a no? Ask your angels. Oh, bye. Reconsider. So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. You have a yes, and then you have another yes. And then you have don't stop. Yes, yes, don't stop. Oh my goodness. Very interesting message here. All right. Let's have a look. Um... Some of you have been consulting with the wrong people. You've been confiding in certain friends, maybe family members, maybe certain people somewhere. Um, but some people, I'm getting the word jealous. Some people are jealous. I'm getting the word rumors. Some people are creating rumors. Be careful who you trust. Here we have no, ask your angels. So you might be asking other people, which is okay as well. However, it's time for a little bit of self-reflection here. And it's good to, to pray, it's good to meditate, and here, um, the way you can contact angels is through the Christ consciousness. Through Him you get to His Father, the Almighty, the Source, the pure white holy light of the universe. These angels work for Him. And it's a Him because He chooses to be Him. He has masculine and feminine energy, but He chooses to be the Alpha, to be a go-getter. Um, we have here also confidence and leadership. Okay, I'm also getting that, those two words. Um, you can ask him that, you know what, I have this problem. I, I really need to have these angels come down and help me. But you also need to give the angels permission as well. And mainly you can deal with um, Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel. I'm also getting the name Uriel, if, if, you, if you wish so. Um, definitely you can add in Uriel as well. Now, what's interesting here, whatever you ask, you're going to get some type of an answer intuitively, maybe through a friend, maybe through a stranger. I've had strangers come up to me and say weird sentences and then just walk away. It turns out that they were messengers in some strange fashion. So that's just kind of freaky when a stranger just comes up to you and starts talking and tells you something that's almost prophetic and then they walk away. It's the strangest thing. And being, being like a female, you know, it's like, stay away from me, creep. Um, because they would not stop talking sometimes. So there's been like two or three incidences in my life, um, incidents in my life, where this has happened. But my point is, sometimes when you're looking for an answer, you get it. Sometimes when you're not looking for an answer, you're getting it because you subconsciously asked it. Um, whatever the answer is, they are telling you to reconsider after you get that information, reconsider what it is that you are going to say and do in this connection regarding this person within the next few months or even several months. It could be, um, the situation will improve. Yes. Yes. Don't stop. Don't stop giving and receiving love. You're going to keep that positive energy flowing. You're going to be able to attract a lot of positive energy. Here under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme, you have big happy changes. So there's going to be changes. They're going to be big and you're going to be happy about it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. 
So I would say like one of the key things here is be careful who you listen to. Sometimes not everybody that you believe um, has, you know, your best interest um, at heart. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes people, I've had like friends. I've had friends who were, when I was terribly, I guess you could say, poor, <laughs> um, they were my friends. And as soon as I became a little successful in my life, professionally, not even with a snowing chip, but professionally, it's like they became jealous, right? Even though I'm inviting them over for like dinner or going out to a restaurant or some something like that, their attitude completely changed. It's like, oh, you think you're hot shit now, eh? But no, I don't. I just worked hard and I suffered a long time. The thing is that the person that you trust 10 years ago whatever how many how many years goes by okay the person that you trust might not be the same person after you have changed slightly if you're still like them if you're still in the same category you still might be able to have that heart to heart but if you have changed in any way if you if this person's still single and you had a girlfriend a boyfriend been there done that you had that experience that might be something that just sets off this person and they just get jealous. And so every time you mention something, they'll be like rolling their eyes or like, hmm, yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't. The thing is why some people get jealous. I'm sorry, but many of you know this. And you might need to cut off some friendships because of this that you think are still good friendships. Or what am I saying? No, that you think were good friendships, but are now not so good. Now one of my own friends that I invite her over all the time. She ref she doesn't even answer my text messages. And I was her, um, what do you call it? I was a bridesmaid at her wedding. Like, that's pretty close. <laughs> you don't just get to be a bridesmaid these days. I was, like, she's my best friend. However, does she give two shits about when I call her? Absolutely not. She doesn't even friggin' answer the damn text messages. Pisses me off. It's like, and you know, she came, she came to my wedding. It's like, why? Why are you jealous? I still love you the way you are. It doesn't matter. But guys, that's the thing. People don't see it like that anymore. People change. People's opinions change. They get jealous. They get upset. Why? Because they cannot achieve what it is that you have. And so for that reason, you have to be careful. They're saying no. Ask your angels and reconsider what's happened because some of you have been consulting with people, might have been great people. However, sometimes people don't give you the right advice because of biases. So that's my story. <laughs> and I know some of you get kind of upset, some of the newbies. Um, why is she talking about herself? Well, because, and that's how you sound to me in my head, um, because because I do give advice, um, I give, which is pretty amazing for me now, I give spiritual advice and I also give relationship advice now. So this is what I do in all of my readings, um, personal, and I also wanted to share it here um, publicly, so why not? All right, Virgo, we have a bonus reading for you, and it's slightly different than what I've ever done online. Um, let's see, yeah, we have enough time. Okay. So I have a package, and I've explained this in other readings already. Some of you cross-watchers and everybody may have seen other videos. Um, but I have to repeat it in each one. So I do have a package. Uh, I believe it's still called the Spiritual Journey Package. However, I don't do those readings right now. Right now I'm focused more on love readings. That's the one that's more in demand. And so this particular type of reading that I do... I have the ability, because the angels have talked, they talk to me, but I have the ability of connecting with them. And so I mentioned this, and I'm going to mention this in this, uh, this video as well, that a while ago I had multiple amount of angels talking to me, but I couldn't make out who's who. And so finally, it's hilarious that they, they categorize themselves to make more sense to me in my mind. So in like, one side of my head, I will hear literally the voice of God. I'll hear Ishu, who is Jesus, 
I'll hear Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel in the back. There's a bunch of others. And now when they talk, it's interesting because now I can tell who's who. Um, before, I would not be able to really differentiate who's who. It would take a while for me to do that. But now, since they decided to do it this way, it's just really interesting. And like, for example, I might hear something on the left side, but I will not hear it coming from the right side. Like the voice will literally come from the left side. It's not an outside voice. It's an inside voice. There's a difference. If it's outside voices, that could be negative energy. I stay away from those. All right. So I'm going to pull out some cards here that are messages from them. Things, things that they think that you need to hear for your own life, for the goodness of your future. Oh, okay. Death and rebirth. Doubt and sensuality. <clears throat> Interesting. All right. Now, this type of reading, guys, it does take me a little bit of time, sometimes a few seconds, sometimes a few moments to get messages from, um, from, the, from heaven, which is in a different dimension, and so I have to tune in like a radio. All right. First card is the strongest here. We have death and rebirth. I have um, Gabriel and Archangel Gabriel and Archangel Raphael. However, Gabriel's taking on more of the conversation, and Raphael's just there to kind of support. Um, in the healing process. We want you to restart your life again. Even though it may seem difficult at this time, we want you to know that you're not alone. Things that you do not see, forces that you cannot even think of, are taking shape around you. But you have the will to mold these shapes. The things that happened to you were not really supposed to happen. You have achieved a lot and you have discovered a lot. You have gained wisdom and lessons learned. Please don't forget what you have experienced. For you will be able to teach others of your experiences. Raphael just kind of, kind of like went in front. <laughs> Um, he's saying, I want you to take care of your health. Not just your stomach, not just your tummy or your stomach, but your mind, your body, your spirit, and your soul. I want you to create a better balance in your life. To be someone who's strong and mighty. because you have the courage and the ability to do so. And I believe in you to do this. What's happened in the past is in the past. Let it go. Rebuild your future. And look for brighter days ahead. This is in unison. Both are saying this. Look for brighter days ahead. We're with you now and forevermore. You just don't see us. But we know what you're up to. And you will soon be on the right path. Right now it's time for healing.
All right, here we go. Next card up is Doubt. This is Archangel Gabriel. Please don't have doubt. Believe in yourself. You are not what you seem to be. You have more potential at heart. And there are things beyond this world that you are able to achieve. But you can only do that from the inside. Your inside is strong. But your self-doubt and your self-worth is bringing you down. You can only move up if you look up. Keep your chin up. Don't put your head down. Be strong and courageous to tackle the unknown. Because you've done it before in a different lifetime. And you have the ability and the courage to do it in this lifetime. You are a strong being and you just don't know it. All right, um, let's have a look at sensuality. My dear sweet angel, this is from uh, Haniel, Archangel Haniel, female voice, <clears throat> soft, gentle female voice. My dear sweetheart, please embrace the shadow self that you have, the desires that you hold within, because it is a part of who you are. Yes, it is a part of human nature to be distraught sometimes and to be upset at yourself for doing the things that you do. But the fact is, you just didn't know any better. And for all of us up here who stand here and watch you, We see you as a child who is learning new skills. We want you to explore your life above and beyond. And not to be confined to the shadows and shackles of planet Earth. We see that you have potential. And that you yourself have been built in a very sensual way. Embrace that sensual side of yourself and do not shy away from it. For not everybody gets that gift. Or remember to embrace who you are and love who you are. That is my message to you. All right, Virgo, last card. Play. I'm getting the name Haniel again. 
Um, okay. My dear beloved one, I want you to embrace yourself. I want you to feel free. I want you to feel happy with what life has to offer. Not everything you will see clearly. But soon the dust will settle. The sands will shift. And you will uncover the true treasure that you are. Once you open this, you will discover your talents and your ambitions that you had locked away a long, long time ago. I want you to feel who you are really. Nurture the child in you. Childhood nurturing is important. Don't forget who you truly are. For the ones who forsake themselves are the ones that get lost in time. But you have been found. Find yourself again. Rediscover yourself again. Pull yourself out of this rut. And learn Learn to have fun in your life. Fun will make your heart happy and will elevate your spiritual being, overall well-being. That's it for me. All right. Wow, Virgo, that was kind of lengthy, but they were good, good messages. Um, I hope that you have been able to at least resonate with some of these. Um, basically, like the messages here are death and rebirth, so there's an importance here where you settle things and you start new again. You start fresh. Don't doubt yourself. Embrace your sensuality and try to have some fun in your life. That's basically what it comes down to. Um, I, however, am not going to change any of the messages. The messages are what they are. Whatever they said, um, and I hardly even remember half of the stuff that just came out. Um, yeah, that's really weird. I don't even remember much that just came out. Um... All right, yeah. So just rewind this. I call it rewind or just go back. Um, I'm old school. And just make a note of this if some of you feel that it's helpful. I personally would because it's very rare for me to even contact the angels um, in this way for a reading. Usually these are private readings. But I wanted to do this for you guys. Valentine's Day is not just about the world. It's about you as well. There's many parts to you and you have to love yourself. By loving yourself, you have to heal. You have to move on. So I wanted you guys to kind of focus on yourselves as well this time around for this coming year. Let's do that. Um, we have here these cards. You can definitely note down what the messages were. You can write positive affirmations. Um, stick it on a wall. Put it close to you. Read it out loud. Keep it in the environment because those words have power. The words have meaning. Always try to keep positive words around positive images, positive words, because energy gets attracted to it. Uh, positive energy will get attracted to it, and that will create a positive environment around you. My dear Virgo, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance um, on the other reading, and I hope that this particular reading was helpful. Do let me know how this may have affected you in any way. All right. You all take care. Stay safe, and I will see you guys again. Bye now.